my mic too quiet or can you all hear me? Yes, it's I great. can hear you. Okay, okay. Uh, so to start with, um, I'm going to do a video and then we have some slides and then a live demo, which might be Let dangerous. <laughs> Uh, so here's an app I made a couple years ago. It's a tower defense game that you play on a dartboard. Um, and it's running in Steam VR Home. And uh, it was at a hackathon, so we did it in the most hacky way possible, which was uh, using two Vive headsets and two computers. And this app is running on a second machine while it's being composited to a different machine and post. So it was a total hack. But um, <laughs> the thing I want to talk about is uh, what the future could look like when we have these standards for compositing applications together, uh, where it doesn't have to be a hack or a, um, you know, a non-perfect system, something where it's actually designed for multiple applications. Um, and I think of this like a, you know, operating system that can, you know, load apps or whatever, and there's an internet connection. But so for the slides, we're talking about uh, universal cyberspace hardware. And it's not going to really be the normal kind of hardware you think about. Um, this is more like if you imagine a world where everyone wears AR headsets and your you know, computing is all done on your face, you know, what does hardware really do if it's not on your face? Is it just like a model? Uh, so here we have um, some art that I made that got me really into this whole internet stuff because I didn't ever know any examples of how multiple applications could actually connect together. If you do have the space where you can have multiple things in the same place. Um, and luckily I was in college and I went around and talked to people and they're like, oh, web sockets are a thing. Uh, so I did my little socket IO web socket thing. So all these um, uh, Chrome windows can actually communicate across web sockets and then work together to create a keyboard out of multiple applications. But of course, you could expand it with you know any kind of keys you want. Um, and this is you know people are talking about blockchain where things are kind of very securely locked down and watched. But I'm a big fan of just this kind of open, able to communicate anything, can talk to anything. Everything should be open. Not everything has to be serious, money, business. Uh, you know, some things can just be a game and it's not a big deal. And that's where a lot of innovation can be. So here's some hardware. Uh, on the left, we have an exercise ball uh, and also maybe a keyboard that could just be connected to the web. And on the right, uh, this is a hula hoop. So, you know, what are you really looking at? What is a hula hoop? Uh, what could it do in a game? And who's going to make a game that you have to buy a hula hoop, you know, to play? Who's going to, you know, put all that money into making custom hula hoop hardware for, you know, creating? This was a UFO that you could control by moving the hula hoop, leaning it to the, you know, at whatever angle. That's the angle you'd move. You could raise it up and down and go up and down. It was supposed to be like a locomotion device that you could kind of control. Uh, one of the ideas was. You know, why do people get VR sick? Uh, do you get car sick? And most people do get car sick occasionally, but if you ask them, well, do you ever get car sick while you're actually driving the car? They don't get sick because they're actually in control of where they're going. So it'd be fun if we had really intuitive forms of locomotion that aren't just, you know, thumbsticks and stuff like that, that, you know, half the population has no idea how to use a thumbstick or what it even is really doing. So here, is uh, my favorite, uh, let's see, what is this? It's, it's, a, it's a selfie stick. Um, <laughs> and you'll see people doing research on how do you make these peripherals that uh, can be like, they're like pegboards and you put weights in these different locations and all this stuff. But there was a time when selfie sticks were a huge meme and they're so cheap. Um, and so this you can actually extend and retract to, um, it will create a different center of mass. So, you know, if you extend it all the way, you kind of have like a golf club. If you, you know, lower it in all the way, then you have a, you know, like a frying pan. So now this thing can literally be an entire infinite range of objects. So who's now going to make a peripheral that can be anything in any game? It's, it's literally impossible to make a game that has every idea of what 
a stick can be. Um, and the cool thing, uh, the way you can actually calibrate this just with one sensor is if you picture like a fairy, like twisting the wrist, uh, that little rotation around a, a sphere can give you the, the length of the, the rod. Uh, it's kind of like calculating the center of a, a circle with the diameter. You can kind of know where that center point is. So you can do like a little flick gesture and then instantly know the length. So you can just quickly make it shorter and longer and it can instantly change on the fly with software. Uh, but now we need software uh, that can accept these different variables. So I made one yesterday. Uh, I made a, a controller and you know, no game supports this dang thing. Uh, and I'm gonna try to give a live demo without uh, dying. So let me try to switch over. Can you all see this? Yes. Okay. Let me. So this is Dreams. It's a it's a engine where everything is made inside the engine, even the art. The only other game I know like that is Any Land. Most things are uh, importer and exporter kind of deals. But so it doesn't have VR support yet, so this is a little rough. But here, you know, this is my hands on this board that has this controller that's attached with tack. And this tack can now, uh, you know, keep it on there. And I'm just getting gyro input, and I can show you that circuit. But so if I stand on it, uh, you can kind of see I'm, I'm uh, balancing a good bit. So now we have the first part of the problem, which is how do we get uh, the virtual device into the engine? The, it's now in here. We have a board. But then the next problem is, well, how can you now control a game with it, you know, unless you're just going to make an entire suite of games from scratch. Good examples of that are, you know, the Wii Fit series and now the latest, uh, what do they call it, uh, Ring Fit Adventure. You have this company that has the power to make all these games because they have all the people. So I modded a game in here. Um, this engine, everything is kind of open source in a way where over here you can uh, just wire in the gyro, but let me switch. I wish I had my sound on, but so here's a game. Uh, it got a really cool drum track. Oh. So I'm going to you know, get totally destroyed at this, but, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> I'm so doing better than I, I did. And I didn't modify the difficulty of this at all, which I really should have. This is just off the shelf, a game that, uh, oh my gosh, that you normally control with like a thumbstick. But I modded the, you know, bumpers. So when you go up to the left, as left bumper up to the right is right bumper. Ooh. But hopefully you can see I'm somewhat <laughs> in control. Ah, just fell. And since there's no VR support, this is just pure gyro data, which is awful because gyros drift. And if you wanted to be in the center of a balance board, you don't want that center point to drift. Oh, it's almost over, I think. Um, yeah, so there could, this is just a random game I found yesterday, but there could be a whole you know, series of games that people find and share. And if you were wearing an AR headset, you'd really just like just look at the board. It would be recognized by you know the spatial mapping of the thing, and then it would just automatically work. It could all be kind of loaded from NPM and stuff like that, because uh, you're just removing all the you know circuity bits from the hardware itself. And you know then when we have muscle tracking and you won't even need buttons. Oh. Oh, I died. Okay. Uh, super fast. Let me just show. Let's 
the best I've done. Where I edited it. So I just went up here. All I did literally went into the controls of the racer and added my circuit, which would then be, you know, on this app store. So anyone with one of these boards, they just, you know, tape their controller to it, load the circuit, and they had their inputs and outputs. And so it was like, you know, it took us a second. So the stuff that I'm super passionate about, though, is once we begin to imagine this world where we can have multiple applications running at once, everyone's working their best to get everything connected together. Um, how can we get people to start? Oh, I moved over here. How can we get people to start uh, creating uh, things from the imagination without worrying if it's real code or not? Just brainstorming, how can we make different objects and connect them, and make new languages that are actually meant to communicate over the internet or uh, sockets or whatever the heck, or maybe devices that are talking into a blockchain or whatever. But uh, it seems like you know, people know how to talk, they know how to work together, they know how to you know, imagine things working together, pretend or whatever. Uh, so there's all these new programming languages that could exist if we had the freedom to make systems where they could exist. And that's the talk. Any questions? Mind blown? Yes, that was awesome. Uh, thank you all.